Hello friends, my name is Saket and I work as a research fellow in Cuts Institute for Regulation and Competition and today we'll be talking about module 12 which deals with horizontal agreements under Competition Act in India. So we have already covered what are horizontal agreements and what are the various types of horizontal agreements. In this specific module we will cover what are the what is the legal framework to dealing with the horizontal agreements in India. So as you know the earlier Monopolies and Restrictive Trade Practices Act of 1969 was repealed in to and a new competition law which is Competition Act 2002 came into India and enforced since 2003. So these provisions related to anti-competitive agreements which are dealt in section 3 of the Indian Competition Act which they were notified in 2009 and so we have seen working of 5 years. So Competition Commission of India was established and we have seen working of these provisions specifically related to anti-competitive agreements since 5 years and section 3 deals with anti-competitive agreements but the focus of the module will be on section 3 clause 3 which deals with horizontal agreements. So basically <coughs> we will cover a types of horizontal agreements dealt under the Competition Act, specifically what is the standard of proof for proving the anti-competitive effects, what are the implications of such agreements on the businesses and also what is the leniency program being developed under the Act and so on. So this, <clears throat> this way the readers will are expected to learn that why the regulation of horizontal agreements or specifically called cartels is very important for the economy because such cartels can have very pernicious effects not only on consumers but also on businesses and then on the whole of the economy. So we will also discuss some examples and some cases which have been decided by Competition Commission of India to illustrate as to what exactly is the legal framework and what is the standard of proof in analyzing the horizontal agreements under the Competition Act in India. So if you look at the India was one of the first countries for, to have a competition law in the form of Monopolies and Restrictive Trade, Act, Trade Practices Act in 1969 and that under that act restrictive trade practices was the area, area under which agreements were covered and the, um, under MRTP restrictive trade practices or as we can say RTPs were defined as a trade practice which has or may have the effect of preventing distorting or restricting competitions. As we can see the cartels were not specifically defined under the MRTP Act but when we will learn in this module that under the con Competition Act, the current Act, the cartels have specifically defined under the Act and so this is the change. If we see the MRTP and the Competition Act, this is one of the changes. Another change is the MRTP Act was not taking care of the extraterritorial territorial jurisdiction was not there as decided by the Supreme Court of India. And so this was keeping in view that there are so many international cartels which affect the Indian economy. It is very important that the competition authority should be empowered to deal with those cartels which have anti-competitive effects in India. So the, now we will see that the, even the extraterritorial things and how to really implement the extraterritorial things are also there and the commission can sign MOUs with agencies of different countries to, to have some collaborative arrangement on information sharing on other things which, which will be very helpful in prevention and detection of 
cartels, specifically the international cartels. Another important aspect, another important thing, change is that a monopolies and restricted trade practices commission was empowered to pass cease and desist orders and it was not empowered to levy fines and penalties. So this is a big difference now. The Competition Commission of India can levy penalties and huge penalties. So now we have seen the shift from earlier MRTP regime which was an era of command and control to a new competition act regime in more liberalized and more era promoting competition. So earlier MRTP act also required registration of agreements. So this registration of agreements is not required under the competition act. So the dawn of a new competition law in India has we can say not seen only the nomenclature change but also a philosophical change and we can see the competition act is more in tune with international principles and is more in tune with times. So now we will specifically cover the anti-competitive anti agreements covered under the act. So it's very important to define the agreement first and it has been very broadly defined in the act. The definition of agreement as per the act extends to mere arrangement or understanding or action in concern which need not be enforceable, which need not be in writing. So you can see that there is a broad definition of the agreement and which should be so that the agency can easily see and cover practices and in which the anti it is dif different to detect so because the cardinals are very different difficult to detect so it, it's very important to have a broad definition of the agreement and because the, the simple reason for this broad definition is as you can recollect from the Lord Denning famous quote that people who combine together to keep up prices do not shout it from their housetops. They keep it quiet, they try to conceal it, so they keep the thing secret. And this is very important to have a broad definition so that we can cover. So section 3 of the competition, section 3 clause 1 of the competition act, it says that no enterprise or association of enterprises or person or association of persons shall enter into any agreement. So the, what are the forms of agreements? We can see it relates to production, supply, distribution, storage, acquisition or control of goods. So any agreements related to these things, goods and services. So if such an agreement is having an appreciable adverse effect on competition in India, then such an agreement will be void under section 3 clause 2 of the act. Specifically this has been provided. So this is one of the implication if the agreement is anti-competitive it will be void under this act. Next section 3 clause 3 although explicitly it is not classified as horizontal and vertical agreements but from the wordings of the section one can easily make out section 3 clause 3 and we have already dealt with horizontal agreements and their types in module 11. So here we will deal how that what is the legal framework of dealing with horizontal agreements under the Indian Competition Act. So section 3 clause 3 of the act deals with horizontal agreements and why we say that because it covers the agreements between entities engaged in identical or similar trade of goods or provision of services. So it also includes cartels which we will cover in more detail as we progress. And the section covers, what exactly it covers? It covers agreement entered into between enterprises or association of enterprises or persons. It also covers practice carried on by association of enterprises and it also covers decision taken by an association of enterprises or association of persons. So there is an agreement which is covered that if there is a practice that also is covered and if there is a decision that also is covered. So it is clear that agreements entered into between 
enterprises and the practice or the decision which are dealing in identical or similar trade of goods. So the use of the word identical or similar trade of goods or provision of services clearly point out that we are covering horizontal agreements. We take the recent case uh, law decided by Competition Commission of India in Bengal Chemist and Druggist Association. Th that case related to alleged fixation of trade margins, issuing circulars directing retailers members not to give discounts on the MRP of the medicines and conducting raids in order to ensure the strict compliance of the directives of the association. So these practices, the commission order notes that such practices fall under the definition of the agreement, such practice or decision. So this shows that the definition of the agreement is quite void and wide and it covers different aspects. <clears throat> and if such an agreement, such a decision, such a practice is having an appreciable adverse effect on competition in India, then it will be void. So what are the types of agreements? The next question emerges, what are the types of agreements which are covered under the section 3 clause 3? So agreements between same level of production chain are called horizontal agreements and are covered under this. So we have already all discussed this in earlier module. So how firms interact? There can be different ways and here we will give example uh, illustrations which are specifically given in the act and there can be collusion which can be explicit or which can be implicit and collusion implies an attempt by competing firms to recognize their interdependence and attempt to act together rather than compete in the market. So the main thing is the competitors in the market themselves become colluders and they try to, to indulge in anti-competitive practices like price fixing or bid rigging or market allocation which all are anti-competitive in nature and which are all may give rise to appreciable adverse effect on competition. Section 3 clause 3 to say specifically at least four broad classifications of horizontal agreements which, can, which are presumed to cause an appreciable adverse effect on competition. So the word of presumption, so this presumptive rule in Indian legal framework of dealing with the horizontal agreement is very important. So what are the four different type of agreement which are specifically covered under section 3 clause 3. First relates to agreements related to prices and next relates to agreements re related to fixing quantity or quality. The third one relates to market sharing and market allocation and the fourth which is specifically listed is relating to rigging bids and doing anti-competitive practices in tender processes. So we deal with the first thing. <coughs> What are the agreements regarding prices? A price fixing agreement occurs when competitors make written or informal or verbal agreements or there can be an understanding on prices of goods, prices of selling or buying goods or giving minimum prices or minimum discounts or magnitude of profit margins. So there can be various ways in which price fixing can be done. And we have already discussed in the earlier modules that what are the different ways in which firms indulge in price fixings. And price fixings is seen as naked restraints and therefore given a more stringent treatment by the competition authorities worldwide. And the Competition Act in India also presumes that price fixing agreements have adverse effect on competition in India. So, so if we uh, see the, we try to, what, are, what can be the examples of, so okay, let us take the example, the recent examples of the cases decided by the CCI. The first, there are different cases and if we see the cases related to the distribution of drugs in India, 
Then there is PVR Medical Agencies, Kerala versus All India Organization of Chemists and Druggists. There is Bengal Chemists and Druggists Association case. So let us very briefly discuss what is the nature of the anti-competitive practices which were being practiced by those firms or associations. So in this All India Organization of Chemists and Druggists was guilty of fixing trade margins and limiting and controlling the supply of drugs in the market. So we will deal with the limiting and controlling supply in the next thing. So CCI in this case held that All India Organization being an apex body of chemists and druggists and was having a full control on stockists, retailers of drugs and therefore it can it was because of such position was able to continuously engage in limiting and controlling the supply of drugs and fixing the price margins through various means which relate to appointment of stockage, stockists, fixation of trade margins and insisting upon NOC for appointment of stockage. So these are the various ways in which they were trying to ensure that the price fixing ensure the stability of price fixing agreement. So stability of cartels, these are the different ways in which stability of cartels they were trying to maintain. And CCI find those heavily. Even in Bengal Chemist and Drugist Association, the similar cases related to the distribution of drugs in India. So those were heavily fined. And CCI imposed a penalty on of about 18 crores on Bengal Chemist and Drugs Association and even it to its office bearers and uh, directed its office bearers and executive members to cease and desist from indulging in such sort of price fixing anti-competitive agreements. The next is agreements regarding quantity and quality. As again this has been already covered in hardcore cartels in module 11 but it's also specifically mentioned in section 3 clause 3. So this relates to there can be various ways we've already seen which includes limiting or controlling production, controlling supply into the markets, controlling technical development or provision of services. So what exactly the firms achieve if they control the supply or production of goods? That is simple, if they do such cartelization activities, they can easily increase the prices and maximize the profits because there will be scarcity in the market. We take the examples of Builder, Builders Association of India versus Seaman Manufacturer, Manufacturers case, again a case decided by Competition Commission of India, in which CCI directed the cement manufacturers from to cease and desist from indulging in activities and they were indulging in activities and there was understanding or arrangement on prices. Further, there was an arrangement on controlling the production and controlling the supply in the market. So this was the classic cartel, cement cartel case which was penalized by Competition Commission of India. There, <clears throat> we can take other examples also and uh, let, it, let it be the film distribution network. Again, there is a case decided there are cases being decided by uh, Competition Commission of India and if we see one case in which a North Indian Motion Pictures Association was found guilty of anti-competitive conduct by imposing compulsory registration of firms films before their release and refusing to register films. So there are different ways in which the association tries to tries to maintain the cartel and tries to maintain and control the supply of uh, goods or services and in this case it was films and so that pro practice of refusing to register the film in the and not allowing the to exhibit the film by was found to be restrictive in nature and was found to be anti-competitive. And the commission ruled that, that such compulsory registration of the film with the trade association was an inbuilt pressure and it is anti-competitive. So there are different other cases 
in which the commission has held that such restrictive agreements which restrict the distribution of films are anti competitive in nature third we will come with the market allocation market sharing or market allocation is where the competitors agree to divide the markets between themselves this can be done through various ways by allocating customers by allocating products or geographic regions so there can be different ways in which markets can be allocated between the competitors themselves and why are these seen as naked restraints because when the firms in the markets have allocated the markets amongst themselves then they have reduced or maybe they have not there's no room for competition in the market so that that is problem so <clears throat> section 3 clause 3 clause c which enlist horizontal agreements which aimed at sharing the market or source of production or provision of services and spec it specifically talks about geographical area of market types of goods or services or number of customers in the market or there can be other different ways in which markets can be allocated so the next thing the next agreement is specifically covered is relates to bid rigging and specifically the def there is a definition of bid rigging which is provided under the act <clears throat> and this definition says that bid rigging covers agreements having effect of eliminating or reducing competition for bids or adversely affecting or manipulating the process of bidding again bid rigging can cause serious economic harm as it artificially increases prices and lowers quality so and it also leads to loss of taxpayers valuable money if it if the bid rigging happens in various public procurement activities and tenders then it can also lead to loss of taxpayers valuable money and you will see that there are various ways in which bid rigging can be done and it can be collusive bidding is done to support the cartel member that has been already designated to win the tender bid so other cartel members may refrain from bid or they might withdraw their bid or they might submit bids at unreasonable or very high prices so <clears throat> there can be various ways in which bid rigging happen and if we take the examples of uh, bid rigging then uh, the case decided by cci again if we take it it's, it relates to suppliers of food preservatives to the food corporation of india in the in this case the the manufacture of aluminum phosphate tablets were supplying the tablets to the food corporation of india and their conduct in the tender for procurement of the tablets was seen as anti competitive so and these they were trying to limit the supply of the set product in the relevant market and also were trying to manipulate they manipulated the bidding process and therefore they those practices were held to be anti competitive by competition commission of india there are other cases also specifically related to railways and if we take the example of railways in the in, <coughs> in the suo moto case because the commission can suo moto also take up cases in a suo moto case taken by cci it was seen that indian railways floated tenders for procurement of feed valves which is used in diesel locomotives and there were three bidders which quoted identical prices for the feed valves and further it was found that the identical the, the even the prices were identical and they were 33% higher than the last purchase so even the that margin of 33% was similar amongst all those bidders so cci analyzed the things and found that those three bidders were engaged in collusive bidding and were bid rigging which was found to be 
in violation of section 3 clause 3a and section 3 clause 3d of the competition act so these were the four ways which are specifically mentioned and in which horizontal agreements can have anti competitive effects and can have adverse effect on competition in india <clears throat> there can be different ways other ways in which horizontal agreements can take place and which can have anti competitive agreement anti competitive effect on the competition within india such examples can be uh, horizontal anti maybe agreements among comp competitors such as price guidelines or recommendations or joint purchasing or selling mm. or maybe something sometimes it relates to te setting technical standards so there can be various way various ways in, in which this can be done and there can be serious implications on the competition coming to the next things specifically as I already told you that a cartel has been now specifically de described defined under the competition act and fighting cartels is one of the priority areas of the competition authorities worldwide so if you see the definition of the cartel as provided in the section 2 of the competition act there are few important ingredients it includes an agreement which includes arrangement or understanding and the agreement is amongst producers sellers distributors that is parties which are engaged in identical or similar trade of goods and provision of services and what is the aim of such cartel agreement that is also given in the definition and it the aim of such cartel is to limit control or attempt to control the production distribution sale or price of trade or goods or provision of services so you can see this cartel is one of the horizontal agri anti competitive agreements and it can have adverse effect on competition in india so these all what we have discussed are four different types of cartels and uh, we dealing with section 3 clause 3 we will we can see that there is exception also provided in the, the act and there there, there uh, that is also important to study so there are certain provisions which provide for the exemptions and carve out exclusion from the provisions of horizontal agreements because horizontal agreements are presumed to have an appreciable but adverse effect on competition so first exemption is efficiency enhancing joint ventures and they are not treated as illegal so proviso to section 3 clause 3 says that horizontal agreements and the effect doesn't apply the, the, the those doesn't apply to the joint ventures if such joint ventures increase efficiencies in production supply distribution storage or acquisition of control so if there are efficiency then they won't be helped to avoid <clears throat> for the we have seen the section 54 of the act of the competition act the central government by notification can notify certain classes of enterprises and exempt them from the provision of competition act and uh, the recent example was the uh, liner shipping agreements which are generally horizontal in nature and aimed at fixing freight rate passenger fares on different shipping routes was one which was exempted in india in 2013 further under the act export cartels are also exempted under the provisions of the act section 3 clause 5 deals with that so since exports do not impact markets in india so this is a this is something which has one can see in various jurisdictions that export cartels are exempted further section 3 clause 5 states that the provisions of section 3 won't apply would not restrict basically the right of any person to restrain any infringement of or to impose reasonable conditions on the specified intellectual property laws there are there is a list of intellectual property laws and section 3 would not restrict the right of any person under those laws to restrain any infringement or to impose reasonable conditions further the activities of the government of india relatable to sovereign functions including activities carried on by department of central government dealing with defense space atomic energy and currency are outside the purview of competition act so 
the <coughs> joint ventures have already told about so they are given exemptions and other three four or five examples i told you are also outside the preview of the competition act and outside the preview of horizontal agreements also so coming to the what is the standard of analysis it is important so as we already told the standard of appreciable adverse effect on competition is the standard aaec what we call it and under horizontal agreements under section 3 clause 3 they are presumed to cause aaec thus the onus of proof is on the person or the enterprise concerned to prove that the agreement doesn't fall under the prohibited category and the presumption is rebuttable and the opposite parties may produce evidence to controvert the presumption contained therein cci also has said that once existence of the prohibited agreement or practice or decision is established there is no further need to show an appreciable adverse effect on competition because a rebuttable presumption of law is drawn that such conduct has an appreciable adverse effect on competition <clears throat> so cartels by their nature are secretive and thus it is very difficult to find direct evidence and there can be cci also taken into account circumstantial evidence which is based on economic evidence also and conduct also in in some of its decisions and so circumstantial evidence in cci has seen in some of the tires cartel case in deutsche bank cci ex the existence of an agreement must be established unequivocally in these cases it appears that cci follows the standard of beyond reasonable doubt for proving but later later in other like soda ash cartel or shoe cartel cases the cci observed the standard of proof is of balance of probabilities so we already deal with the cement cartel cases so there these are the examples of the cartel cases cement cartel cases drug supplier cartel cases cci examines the conduct based on economic as well economic evidence as well as conduct based evidence also section 19 clause 3 also deals with some six set of factors which are given first relates to creation of barriers to new entrants in market second relates to driving existing competitors out of markets third is related to foreclosure of competition so first three are set of negative factors next three factors relate to accrual of benefits to consumers improvements in production and uh, last one is promotion of technical scientific and economic development so there are six set of factors which are provided in section 19 clause 3 which are useful in determining whether the agreement has an appreciable adverse effect on competition under section 3 or not but it is important to note that adverse effect on competition is presumed if it falls under section 3 clause 3 that is it's if it's an horizontal agreement or if it's a cartel so you will find more details about this on module so okay. one very in, uh, important aspect is that in fiki multiplex association case cci held that factors mentioned in section 93 may be considered by commission even while rebutting the presumption of anti competitive agreements so this was next we move to extra territorial jurisdiction very briefly we will cover because that was the main problematic area with mrtp also so now section 32 of the act grants cci the extra territorial jurisdiction over anti competitive conduct which has an appreciable adverse effect in india so any competitive act any anti competitive activity taking place outside india but having an adverse aaec in india shall be subject to the application of competition act and cci can <coughs> enter into a memorandum of agreements memorandum of understandings with different uh, competition agencies which can be related to capacity building to start with or later information sharing and other areas of joint efforts so that it facilitates the detection and fight of cartels and such 
cooperation and extraterritorial jurisdiction is very important these days as one can see in mature jurisdictions like european union and us there is more cooperation within the agencies to fight against the cartels so what are the remedies for what are the remedies provided in the act to remedy the anti competitive conduct as per section 33 during the course of inquiry there there can be interim orders also which cci can pass cci can may direct a delinquent enterprise to discontinue so cci can ask the firms to discontinue or not to re enter into such anti competitive horizontal agreements it can direct the modification of agreements it can impose a penalty of 10% of the average turnover for the last 3 preceding years financial years in case of cartel a penalty of up to 3 times its profit for each year of the continuance of such agreement or up to 10% of its turnover for each year of continuance of such agreements whichever is higher can be imposed section 48 also incorporates individual liability and provides for liability of individuals so that is also important to see and cci can pass any other order which it deems fit in a specific case so it has got wide discretion so that doesn't provide for criminal liability other than willful default in implementing the orders of the commission it is important to know that in bengal case bengal chemists and druggists association case even the office bearers were levied penalty so that is an important thing uh, one very important aspect which which is the last thing i want to cover is the leniency provisions As, and it is very important thing uh, and the act covers that in section 46 of the act and there is regulation also of 2009 which incorporates frame legal framework of the leniency provisions in india and it provides for a full and full leniency program and there is a procedure for that imposition of lesser penalty is there if any producer seller distributor or serve or any other cartel member is alleged to have violated the competition act but there are certain conditions which needs to be satisfied first is the firm has made a full and true disclosure in respect of the alleged violation the next is such disclosure is vital third important thing is that such a party which comes forward continues to cooperate with cci till the competition till the completion of the proceedings before the cci and the next important point is the disclosure should be made before the report of the investigation by the director general as directed by the cci has been received so vital disclosure what it means under the regulation it means full and true disclosure of information or evidence by the applicant to the commission which is sufficient to enable the commission to form a prima facie opinion about the existence of cartel or which helps to establish controversy under section 3 so as per the frame regulation first applicant might grant might be granted 100% immunity second applicant up to 50% immunity and the third application up to 30% immunity if the prescribed conditions are fulfilled therefore these provisions contain a discretionary immunity even if all the conditions are fulfilled and we have not seen any leniency application a leniency case being till now decided by cci but at least there are provisions for leniency and uh, cci has started levying heavy fines on cartels so in times to come one can see that cci will try to ensure that the legal framework and the regulations are such that they help leniency applicants to come forward and take necessary steps to help cci in fighting and detection of the cartels so this module dealt with the horizontal agreements which have adverse effect on competition in india and it covered various types of agreements which were provided under the act it covered what are the nature of such agreements and it covered what are the, what is the standard of proof and it we also gave you 
various cases decided by CCI. So this was all for the module 12 which covered the horizontal agreements covered under the, under the Competition Act in India. Good luck to you for other and if you want to if you want to refer to further readings so please go to the module there is a list of further references and readings which will be helpful in more detailed study of this very important aspect of competition law in India. Thanks.